I'm reviewing tangent scale models in scale 3600 cubic foot quad hopper on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Well, today I am very excited to get my first look and my first run of tangent scale models, 3,600 cubic foot quad hoppers decorated in Union Pacific paint schemes. Now, these models first were announced and released back in 2018. In fact, I had an opportunity to interview the guys from Tangent at the National Train Show when they made that announcement. Got to take a look at the first run of these hoppers and talk to them about uh, the detail and the very exciting uh, uh, features of these particular models at the train show. And I included that interview in a series of three interviews about new products in a video back then. And if you haven't seen that video, you're going to want to see it in conjunction with this one as you consider these models. And I'll link it in an iCard at the end of this video. You'll, be, want, to be, you'll want to be sure and check that out. Now, the prototype quad hoppers first came out in the early 1970s, and they were produced primarily for Union Pacific. In fact, for many years, they were the workhorse of Union Pacific's coal hauling fleet, and many of them are still on the rails today. Tangent offers them in a wide variety of Union Pacific paint schemes from the very early original paint schemes all the way up through some of their repaints as late as the mid-1990s. Which means that if you're a Union Pacific modeler or if you model a railroad that interchanges with Union Pacific and hauls coal, these may be some great models for your layout and for your operations. Now I do need to say from the outset that the models I'm reviewing today were provided to me by Tangent Scale Models. That being said, I'm going to give you my honest opinion of what I see and what I think of these models as I open them up, as we take a look at the detail, and as we get them on the layout and see how they run. I also want to give a shout out and a thank you to my buddy Lionel Strang at A Modeler's Life Podcast, who helped me connect with the guys at Tangent Scale Models so that I could get these models to review for you. Lionel, thank you so much. So now let's head on over to the workbench. We'll get these models opened up and see what they look like, and see how they run on the layout. Check out our sponsor, Midwest Model Railroad. With some of the best prices and customer service in the business, they're your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. Here I have three of tangent scale models Bethlehem Steel 3600 cubic foot quad hoppers uh, and I have uh, three different paint schemes. I have one in uh, an original paint scheme uh, as it came out in the early 1970s uh, and then two of the 1997 repaint jobs. Uh, one in uh, what's called the version 3 paint scheme and then another one in the version 4 paint scheme which has the UP Shield Herald uh, included on it, which is a very nice detail. Uh, just a little background on these. The, uh, the, this uh, Bethlehem Quad Hopper uh, was produced uh, primarily, maybe even exclusively, I believe, for Union Pacific. Uh, and this was kind of the primary uh, coal hopper for Union Pacific for years and years and years. It was the largest fleet of coal hoppers they ever had, and they are still on the rails today. Again, these were repainted uh, 1997 repaints, so uh, you know that's not that long ago, and many of these are still running on the, the railroad today. Um, Tangent has these in a wide variety of paint schemes, from original paint schemes to repaints, uh, so throughout the 40-some the, the year history of these, uh, you could find paint schemes that Tangent has uh, offered uh, from about any, any era during that, uh, during that time. Uh, and uh, I know that they're going to be very, very nice models because Tangent has been making incredible uh, HO scale models for years. I was very excited when I first heard that they were going to come out with their first in-scale car. 
Uh, and even though that was a couple of years ago, I'm excited now to take a look at them. So all right, we're going to just slide a couple of these uh, aside for, for right now and uh, take a look at this one uh, in the original paint scheme. Comes boxed in a plastic jewel case as is uh, so standard for, uh, for many uh, in-scale models. And uh, so we take the lid off. It's wrapped in a nice piece of soft plastic just to protect the, uh, the, the fine details and to keep it from getting um, damaged in any way in shipping. And we'll pull this out. And the first thing you're going to you're going to see is that these come with uh, uh, very prototypical Western flood style coal loads. And this is a very nice looking coal load. It's got just the right amount of, of sheen and dullness to it to, to look pretty, pretty realistic. Uh, it's very realistic the way it, it, it fills into and fits in the car. It's not perfectly symmetrical from one end to the other, which, which, which gives you that, that sense of, of, of realism as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I've never taken one of these out, so I'm not sure the best way to take that coal load out, but we're going to try to pull it out here. Um, might have been a good idea to check uh, somewhere to see some advice on the best way to do that, but I'm going to come in here with uh, need to find, uh, find a skewer that has a nice point to it, see if I can kind of pop it out here. Um, there's probably a better way to do this than what I'm doing here, uh, and you certainly would hope so because if you want to uh, run these loaded in one direction and empty in another, you want them to pop out a little easier than that. There, I got it. I got it pried up on one end, and uh, and it just pops uh, pops right out. Uh, I would say it would probably be a good recommendation. Uh, maybe uh, if you're going to take these in and out. Uh, put a magnet or a piece of metal on the inside and where you can use a magnet and, and help lift those out would probably make life a little bit easier. Uh, one of the really cool things that uh, I knew about these models and I'm, I'm excited to see is the fact that they include uh, interior bracing. Uh, very, very few um, uh, coal hoppers uh, these days include that, that bracing. Uh, and this is very, very fine detailed bracing because it's kind of the first thing that I'm looking at here on this particular car. Um, very nice, very nice. Uh, I'm going to turn it over here to the side. And uh, I, I, I know that uh, Tangent prides itself on A, very realistic prototypical paint colors. Uh, and this does look like a fantastic representation of Union Pacific's um uh, I'm not sure what their exact name that they use for it. It's basically a Tuscan red uh, that they used on these coal hoppers. And this, I, you know, I watched these very coal hoppers run through my hometown the whole time I was growing up. So, so I mean, this is kind of a flashback to my childhood to look at this one. And uh, this is exactly, apart from the fact that it, it's not weathered, it's not dirty. Uh, this is exactly what I remember. A little, uh, yeah, just a flake of confetti or paper or something there um anyway so yeah the the, the color is is spot on uh the uh the, the the font the the letter size the crispness of the paint uh i can i can tell from the stuff that i can strain my eyes to see that even the smallest letters here uh are uh our, our, our actual, you know, letters and our, and our crisp. And I know if I got a magnifier and looked at those, those would all be, would all be legible. Um, beautiful detail on, on things like the ladders, the stirrup steps are, you know, very, uh, uh, prototypical size, very, uh, very, very delicate. Uh, and even the little, the little details of the hardware along the sides, uh, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to the bottom here and you can see, uh, maybe some of the nicest detail I've ever seen as far as the gates, on uh, uh, the, the, the various uh, hopper bays of this particular uh, model. Uh, a separately applied brake rigging. Uh, it's very, very delicate. Uh, looks really, really good. Uh, also, uh, one of the things that's advertised about these, and, and uh, I'm, I'm seeing it now for the first time, uh, they, they have metal wheel sets, 100 ton trucks, so 36 inch uh, metal wheel sets, and they are contoured not only on the face, but they are also prototypically contoured on the back. Uh, so if you ever see the, the back of the wheels, uh, they're going to look, they're going to look right. Um, so just a beautiful model so far. I could take it around here and uh, we'll take a look at, at the end. I'm just going to make sure that we are uh, 
focus there. Uh, and here we got, of course, a separately applied brake wheel. That's pretty standard. Very nice, again, delicate uh, uh, ladders with rungs uh, and um, all of the bracing across here. We've got the, the brake hardware in here. And, and again, it is very uh, separately applied in very nice detail. Uh, we've got the, the wire cut levers, which is one of the things that they advertise, separately applied cut levers, and they're made of wire. And then, uh, of course, we've got the, uh, the, the rubber uh, air hose here that uh, uh, is also kind of one of the, the, the things that they uh, pride themselves on. Uh, the the couplers are um, microtrains compatible couplers uh, and that's how they advertise that and and it looks a little like a, a microtrains coupler we'll test how well they couple up together uh, when we get it out to the layout in just a few minutes turn around here and take a look at the other end and again here this is uh, uh, you know not the end with the brake uh, details uh, but all the bracing in there in fact more more bracing in here against the end slope sheets than you typically would see and uh, just incredible, just incredible amount of, uh, uh, of detail. Uh, I'm very, very impressed with the, with the detail and with the color, the paint scheme of, of this car. So uh, it's, it's very impressive. Uh, I'm going to set it back up here. I'm going to put my coal load back in place. Uh, and then I think we will um, take these, all three, out to the layout. Uh, there are a couple of things that... Um, uh, that have been advertised about these that uh, are both good and also that are a little bit concerning to some inscalers, uh, especially about the minimum radius and how they run. And so we're going to test that out just a little bit out on the layout. Here you can get a close-up look at some of the beautiful detail on these models. They have etched metal brake platforms and fantastic rivet detail. As I said before, the separately applied brake hardware detail is superb. I checked the cars for compliance with NMRA standards and found that they were right on the money as far as wheel gauge, car weight, and coupler height is concerned. I checked the couplers, which are supposed to be Microtrain's couplers compatible, and found that they operated perfectly with both Microtrain's and Accumate couplers. The cars roll freely and pull smoothly, even behind my UP locomotive, which was having some issues with surging in reverse. The one issue that has been raised with these models from the time they were first announced is with their minimum radius. The detail around the draft gearbox, including the rubber air hose, interfere with the truck's abilities to navigate tighter curves without rubbing on the detail or derailing the car entirely. You can see here that there's not a lot of travel for these trucks to turn. Thus, the recommended minimum radius for these cars out of the box is 18 and 3 quarters inches. That is a pretty broad curve in end scale. I decided to test them myself on my own layout. I have two adjacent curves with 18 inch and 16 inch radii respectively. I tested the cars by hand and with a locomotive both pulling and pushing them. I found that the cars navigated the 18 inch curve with no problem, but on the 16 inch curve the air hose rubbed the back of the wheel and sometimes displaced up and out of place entirely because of friction with the wheel. Tangent has outlined on their website how these cars can be adjusted for 15 inch and even 12 inch curves, but these adjustments involved removing the air hose and other details. I doubt many modelers will want to purchase a highly detailed model only to have to remove some of those details in order to make it run on their layout. This is a non-issue of course for those with curves of 18 inches or greater. But those with smaller layouts and tighter curves need to be aware of this issue before they purchase these models. Perhaps this is an issue Tangent will address in future in-scale offerings. I do want to say that these are absolutely beautiful cars that run excellently with the exception of the tighter curves that I noted before. If you have a layout with 18 inch or greater curves, I think these cars will make an excellent addition to your Union Pacific fleet and I would highly recommend them for you. 
Well, I have to say that these models by tangent scale models are some absolutely beautifully detailed hoppers that I think anyone would be proud to have on their layout. They have very fine detail and yet are sturdy to, to be handled and not easily broken in my estimation as I have dealt with them uh, for some time now on, on my layout. As we go forward, I look forward to seeing what Tangent Scale Models does in InScale in the future. Uh, I, I hope that they can continue to produce some beautifully detailed models like this, uh, but hopefully uh, some that can run on slightly tighter radius curves, as I think they will open up a, a much greater part of the InScale market. Now, I didn't mention the price of these models in the video, so let me do that now. These models MSRP for $32.95 at Tangent Scale Models and are available at a variety of brick and mortar hobby shops. I happen to know that as of the recording of this video, there are a number of these from the 2019 second run available at Midwest Model Railroad for $21.42. That said, you'll find a link for both Midwest Model Railroad and Tangent Scale Models in the description down below. You'll want to go and check those out. Well, hey, if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll want to check out the interview that I did with the guys at Tangent when they first made the announcement of these cars, and you'll find it in a link in a card in the corner of your screen right now. Before you go, check out the description down below where you're going to find my Amazon pick of the week and my Micromark promo code, as well as tons of other great links that I know you'll enjoy and benefit from. Be sure and check those out. Well, if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?